Oh, and yeah. we're live. Okay. Right. Hey, so. Vinit. Uh, Vinit, thanks for joining me again. Uh, we got cut off last, a bit early last time. Yeah, we did. We did. I think a lot of people were disappointed. I saw a lot of comments saying, it is not working. It is not working. <laughs> we just kept talking for another half an hour. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, let's check if it's actually working now. Is it working? Let me, let, let's look. Yeah, we're good. I think we're live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, we're live anyway. Um, so yeah, so last time actually it was funny. It was just the conversation was just heating up a bit. We were actually just getting into the kind of comparison between the, I suppose, the 3D industry and the 360 industry. We were saying yeah. how, how they're kind of, I suppose, fundamentally different and kind of looked at the path for both of them. I suppose I was making the point that um, that like a lot of the innovation at the moment is around the kind of 3D mesh and the 3D platforms and how I suppose that uh, raw data can be utilized for other sources. And I suppose my question for you was before we got cut off was like, I suppose, where is the, where, I suppose, what are the limitations and where can the 360 industry go in comparison to the 3D industry? Right. I think, uh, you know, the, the biggest issue, one is, you know, the industry is going towards 3D. There is no doubt about it. It's, it's going to be accelerated. The 360 industry was kind of dead, let's be honest about it. And the pandemic kind of re-energized re the industry and made virtual tours using 360 photograph uh, a little bit more uh, uh, relevant. But I think the industry is definitely going the 3D space uh, kind of direction. But there, there are a lot of challenges for it. You know, obviously the capture part is a huge challenge. And I think that there is no product right now that is kind of uh, focused on getting that market. And I think, uh, for example, Matterport has the technology, but their technology is so kind of outdated. You know, they, yep. they're using the same technology that they were using in 2011, 2010. Yep. They're trying to innovate. They have this new iPhone app that's allowing you to do it. Uh, but still, as far as I know, their core tech is really, really old. Um, so they can't integrate things that are like, like the new iPad that has, uh, you know, I don't know if you've tried it, but you can basically do a 3D yeah. screen in the iPad. But the technology that is used for that is very different from what Matterport uses, yeah. right? So the only way Matterport can really shift into that technology is if they completely throw out their old tech and completely switch to this new form of meshes and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one part, which is what are the existing 3D technologies going to do? Now, when it comes to 360 photographs, I think uh, the only advice I always give 360 photographers is what you want to do is you want to capture as high as resolution as possible. This is a very important part uh, of your photographs so that when a, a solution comes up that can convert uh, 360 photos into 3D uh, 3D mesh. The street view kind of does, uh, but yep. it's not a it's not a full mesh. Um, your photographs are actually relevant. Uh, is that me? No. Right. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Do you want to take that? We'll come back to you. Very well. No, that's good. <laughs> that. That's okay. These are these are uh, never all day. It's it's customers calling me. That's good. That's good. Another yeah. another sale today. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's my it's the customer support um, thing that usually I close down for. I don't know why. So it's the customer support when someone goes on the support and says, "Hey, can I know something that's been kind of rings?" <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, just to, just an example of how dedicated of a founder I am. No, you heard it from my chat twenty four seven, just letting you know. So someone, so someone else was using teleport me ring Vinit here now quickly so we can confirm <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I think uh, the the industry with 360 is, in my opinion, kind of revived because of the pandemic, but it was kind of going down the 3D thing. And it's yeah. very important for uh, photographers or service providers that want to be in this industry, uh, understand 3D, understand that they are photographs need to be high resolution so that they can convert mm -hmm. this. Uh, and a lot of products right now are not, are not ready for 3D yet. They're just not built for 3D. Uh, and we are, you know, I mean, our whole system since the day we started, um, you know, we call teleport me for a reason. Um, 
was was kind of constructed for this revolution that was too early you know yep. we were too early for this so we're happy that it's coming and um and i don't know if the if the story with matterport and us uh, start starting in the same office was cut off or was it there but i think that was that's an interesting thing yeah yeah tell that again i remember you were saying i suppose he it was uh, i think it was on it but i suppose a lot of it could be other new people tune in today but i remember you were saying that i suppose when you started out you were I suppose the same investor but you yeah. went down the hardware route uh, or software route and matterport went down the hardware route and yeah maybe give some yeah. insight into, into, into that background yeah so uh so both matterport and teleport me started off in the same office um we were kind of adjusted the same office as in the same floor they were here we were here and uh and what what had happened was uh one of their investors had uh, so this is a story. So one of the investors had had come to to Matterport to talk to them because they is they already an investor. And while he was going down, we both met in the in the elevator. And literally, it was an elevator pitch where he asked, "Oh, what do you do?" And I said, "Oh, we're teleport me. We do this." And he's like, "You know Matterport?" I said, "Yeah, we know that." And that's how the conversation started. And he said, "You know what? I really wanted to invest in a company that was doing mobile capture and you know 3D and." things like that and really innovate on the software side because he he was like i believe software is going to be very relevant but today obviously you don't have the hardware so you're never going to reach that 3d scale and this guy is a, is a very well known uh he was one of the first engineers on youtube so he, he knows his stuff around videos and he was the head of uh, samsung vr team a guy called dribble this so um is so it? he put a bet on us and he put a bet on matterport and uh, he was very happy with his bet on Matterport. Um, he, he cashed out, and hopefully he'll cash out with us, uh, you know, in, in the coming years. But I think uh, that was the bet he put on us, which is we would we would develop on the software side, and we would develop on the on uh, basically the core algorithms. Whereas whereas what Matterport would do is they would build an entire hardware infrastructure to enable three D capture. So that's the mm -hmm. the, the simultaneous bets he put, um, and. I, I really don't know because there were a couple of companies like Occipital that came up with the scanner. Uh, this, uh, sorry, um, what's the name of the product? Um, Scanic. What was called? So I don't know if you heard of Occipital, but they had this Occipital, like they had this thing that you would attach to an iPad and, and use it to scan. Uh, so now they yes, have a product it was, called it Canvas. Which does, you know, Okay, I thought they were, were they a Russian were they a Russian based company, was it no? They acquired the Russian based company. So the Russian based company, which is Geo C V got got sued by Matterport. And so what Occipital yeah. did was they acquired the engineers okay. from Geo C V. Uh so that because Occipital had patents, so they said, you know what, uh, we'll acquire you guys to build a competitor. But then the founders left. Uh, and even any time a founder leaves a startup or like a you know like something some some company that's trying to push something it's never a good sign um so you know i don't know where occipital is gonna go but um these were like the, these were the three big companies as occipital and matterport uh um, yeah. we just never got into the virtual tour part which we are now and it's yeah. been a challenge because like you said you know like there are 50 50 companies that look the same um so it's yeah. important to to say why you're different yeah, absolutely, and that's and that's something we were discussing before. This is that it's like it's a uh, um, six seven months ago. It was an easy choice. Someone entering this industry, it was yeah. it was very clear on paper what the providers were, what they what they did, and and now I suppose there was virtual tour companies popping up every month over the past uh, over the past six seven months, and I suppose the. Uh, everyone trying to keep up with each other in terms of features in terms of i suppose in reaction to covid and it kind of just ex exploded from there but i suppose one very important thing i suppose that that you were saying was that like in terms of like image quality image image quality is certainly something that is overlooked and i know myself it was that it was definitely something i suppose i went down a 3d route from the beginning but it definitely was something that i probably i probably would have overlooked if i went to 360 route um but we were saying that like a lot of this like a lot of the like there's so much data being captured on a daily basis now throughout the world but a lot of that data could be rendered useless in in years to come when technology gets that when the kind of when the software the technology gets there because i suppose uh its quality is being i suppose it, it's, it's not it's not what people i suppose are, are aiming for at, at the end of the day it, it's it's all about features all about use cases and quality is not something that people i suppose keep in mind a lot of the time yeah i think you're right i think uh you know there is 
a lot of uh, value in speed. Uh, and I think most 360 photographers that are getting into the market today want to do as much as possible, make some money off it. Um, but I think there is a lot of value with, say, for example, you are doing a virtual tour of a restaurant or a space that uh, eventually you can monetize or the business owner can monetize. So explaining to the user or the business owner, for example, we have a customer from Colombia and you would not expect Colombia as a customer, but they, they are a huge real estate firm. And I had a call with the founder and this is this, the guy said, you know, I know that 3D is going to come in maybe three or four years mm -hmm. and our, the data we capture today is going to be useful that day. So I don't want to spend my money on bad, bad software and bad hardware and just to redo it all over again and yep. buy it again. So, you know, our, our software is expensive for Colombia, right? Yeah. Uh, and so he, he bought like the highest, uh, you know, the highest uh, plan because of that. He said like, I want to, he, I think he's a, uh, he has about 320 properties or something like that. Okay. So he's like, I just wanted to get it done and I want every year for it to get better and better and better. Uh, so having that foresight or explaining it to your customer, especially universities and things that are not going to go off tomorrow, uh, is mm -hmm. very important in terms of value add that you can provide to your customers, right? So if, if your customer thinks that, okay, they got to do this again and again and again and again, like next tomorrow, if Google Street View says, cause Street View is already rejecting low resolution panoramas cause it doesn't pro it doesn't provide what they want, which is high quality, yeah. high fidelity data. Um, so uh, that, that's the reason why quality is important. I think yeah. it has to yeah. be a kind of a future mindset that has to like. Yeah, absolutely. And, what and, and, and I suppose, and I suppose that is a that is a mindset. I suppose that that is a lot of people probably find it hard to get into because at the moment, um, at the moment, I'd probably say I suppose looking at the industry on a day to day basis, features are winning out. Features right. are as well. Features are winning out. Features are what most platforms are aiming for. Uh, they're trying to draw people customers in, and they're trying to show people show I suppose their customers how they can sell it to their customers. So how that that, that is I suppose the yeah. difficulty is that is that there's there is a lot of platforms, there is a lot of noise, and features is what is what is drawing people in. And not not quality because I suppose at the end of the day, one one thing is is that it is hard for I suppose people to sell just an image quality. They need to have I suppose those other sources to be able to provide a solution. Because uh, I think you said you, you said you said it well last day is that you aren't going to get rich off virtual tours alone. It has to be a solution built around virtual tours. So how do you how is Teleport Me trying to combine say the rich visual data along with the features to kind of right. bring the whole overall package together? I think this is the question we ask ourselves every day. Uh, you know, I think uh, we have looked at certain things like, you know, we saw what, uh, you know, Matterport is doing with their platform. We're looking at uh, how marketing virtual tours our spaces has, is going to change. Um, so the thing that we are probably going to do in next year is have more um, sort of plugins to our core virtual tour. That's going to be our focus. Um, and this does not necessarily mean features of the virtual tour itself, uh, but features that enable better marketing of the virtual tour. So right now, for example, if you want to market a video, you have so many things. You have interstitial ads, you have, you know, you can put stuff in, you know, pop-ups, this, that. You can really program a video to be a great lead generation tool. That is not possible with, with virtual tours today. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that could be valuable for uh, a market here to go to the, our customer and say, hey, uh, you know, a video is great, but a virtual tour where you can actually convert a customer, um, mm -hmm. that would be much more interesting. Um, and instead of, for example, like I'm going to give you an example of 3D Vista, right? So 3D Vista yep. packet solution, uh, it, is, it is not the best solution for a market here. Um, because you have to do a lot of uh, overlay stuff. You have to, there's no direct API integration. You have to build an entire solution on top of 3D Vista to yep. enable any kind of marketing. Yep. Um, and same goes with things like Pano 2 VR or any of these things. Yep. Uh, you're not API based. So if you're not API based, you can't even like call an email form uh, yep. uh, on an interaction, right? If you can't call that, then, you know, how are you going to generate leads, right? Now yeah. there are some plugins that 3D Vista has, Matterport has that can generate these, but these are like very, very little. They are not extensive. 
you know, as a marketeer, there are like 100 email, uh, you know, email newsletter plugins that marketeers use. You know, yeah. and they use different kinds of lead gen forms. And that's the thing that we, we are going to enable is because our entire platform is API based, uh, a lot of our um, core functionality can be accessed via an API using say a Zapier or IFTT or any kind of integration. Oh, brilliant. So that's, so that's, that's, I suppose that's, a, yeah, I suppose like from, a, as you said, like a digital marketer, I suppose I use Zapier on a day to day basis. I've, oh, yeah, tried out, I've tried out 50 different email providers. I've tried out, I suppose, 50 different types of LinkedIn, Facebook automation providers. But, being able to, but like essentially, essentially what you can do is what you can, is I suppose teleport me is probably tr trying to move towards kind of like uh, your virtual tour or could be like your virtual storefront or your website the first point of call for customers yeah. but they don't have to go elsewhere to I suppose to I suppose move customers along the sales pipeline the virtual tour can be built to move them through the sales pipeline in the way that they would maybe say on their website or, but, but in a more I suppose engaging uh, manner and a quicker manner probably yeah I think uh, you know I think there's value to that uh especially for i would say kind of the um, the real estate as well as the tourism space these are two spaces that conversion really matters and uh you know your your virtual tour needs to load quickly it needs to engage quickly and there yep. needs to be call to actions absolutely fast yeah um, and so if that's not there you know like your product is going to die when it comes to marketing like it's like it's just not going to work. And I think uh, one of the companies that we bought last time, uh, Treatise, does something very similar. Um, yeah. They use a absolute horrible marketing asset, which is the Matterport, and make yeah. it usable by adding stuff on it. Yeah. Uh, now, Matterport is not that extensible. Uh, so there's very little you can do with Matterport. Yeah. Uh, with us, you can do a lot of things. And uh, mm. once we expose those APIs up, I think a lot of marketers will, will have a field day. You know, like people do. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I also don't know things like, you know, now that, uh, you know, I am exposed to the marketeers through a certain website, I am amazed by the number of tools and uh, the number of integrations people are able to do. Uh, just, you know, from an idea, they can just kind of figure out a way that people are going to buy and people are yeah. going to work. Um, so I think I think uh, that that's kind of where we want to go. Yeah, absolutely, and I suppose the like the like it's funny when you say about like when well, treat us last time. One of the things I, I particularly liked about them, and one thing I think that needs to be done purely because of I suppose the just 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 the way the world is. I suppose there's so much noise in every aspect. Now there's so much noise in the virtual tour industry. But one thing that like that has happened, especially for the case of say like museums or tourist industries, that everything has gone to location based triggers, location based mar marketing, where people are are are, are offered say either self-guided tours where they can, I suppose, have a more user or customized experience. And that's something that we can now start to bring into virtual tours with the, with the use of, say, location-based triggers. And that's something that you can actually, I suppose, virtually create a physical tour that you would have at the Lux Museum. But one thing that I suppose really impressed me about, and one thing that I was crying out for three or four years ago was was the use of something like that, because we were working with museums and I suppose very, I suppose, tech sa savvy museums where galleries were, I suppose they were like users, audio guides would be activated by Beacon Technology when you went to the next yeah. gallery. Um, and and they would do that. I know that that very same thing can be replicated. That very same thing can be replicated. So it, it, it really just brings forward, I suppose, the implications and use cases because you can have the very same experience virtually as you as you could there. Whereas whereas even four or five months ago, that was impossible. That wasn't the case. And yeah. um, so it is it is great that there's all innovation. And one I suppose one one really good thing where I think that I suppose there, there can be I suppose a lot of high value businesses can be built over the next year or so. Um, I see there's a massive, I suppose, area to capitalize on right now because like you, people can people can build a business that is focused primarily on the likes of museums or tourist attractions. People yeah. can build a business that's primarily focused on the likes of say uh, manufacturing plants or industrial plants because they have a more specialized service and they can create a user experience which they're trying to create in the physical location. And that's something that has been missing for for quite a while. Yeah, I think I think this uh, kind of uh, industry specific stuff. I think Joachim was on on your uh, thing where he does yeah. very specific to construction, yeah. and we have been looking into construction too. Uh, we have something that something really small that we are introducing uh, with a construction company just to like test it out. Um, but you're right. I think there is now 
uh, verticals where you can be uh, virtual tours for museums and have, uh, you know, but again, the, the problem with that really is all the solutions that are coming out are not API based. Any solution you pick, yeah. they're not API based. So they're all, you know, I hate to say this, but all of them are packaged open source solutions that yeah. people have just put a, put a user interface around. Even Cloud Panel is similar. Cloud Panel uses Marzi Panel to, to run their entire, uh, you know, virtual tour. So how yeah. are you going to access Marzi Panel if you don't have an API? Uh, yeah. So yeah. we, we use this thing called Panelum, but Panelum is super little open source. There's really nothing that it's only the viewer part. Everything about the viewer is built by us. So, um, so there, that that's the problem with the industry right now. So you have the Matterport, which has built an excellent product. Matterport is the best product in the industry. There's no doubt about it. They are number one by far. Uh, but it's difficult to access their product. It is difficult to build things on top of their product. It is also expensive for most of the world. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have the rest of us. The rest of us fall into the category of technology company or sales company. Uh, yeah. And I would say that you know companies like 3D Vista, Teleport Me, uh, I would say even maybe Kula, we fall in the technology side of it, where yeah, absolutely, we're yeah, more technology guys. And yeah. I would say guys like Cloud Panel, uh, iStaging, iSpy360, they're all mostly in the sales part, which is they have mm -hmm. a, they have they all use off-the-shelf software, and their focus is on selling the product, yeah. then really innovating, and that's where the feature uh, war goes, because they don't really care how good the feature is or whether the feature is relevant. But the way they differentiate is that I have this feature and you don't. Yep. And that's not really useful because I can have 50 features, but if those 50 features are trash, there's no point in using their product, right? Yep. And yep. Uh, that's the core core difference right now in these two segments. And you're right, there are more of them coming out in the sales part of it where they are going, they're, they're repackaging off the shelf solutions and you know running Facebook ads. You know, Basically the sales part of it is more than the product side of it, and I think yeah. uh, your audience uh, probably could, could, you know, with this conversation can actually go and figure out okay, which product actually has core technology that they have built or could be useful for us. Because price-wise, I think all of us are almost in the same range. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, per month it goes from I, I don't know the lowest is fifteen uh, per month to I think the highest is forty. I think I think Cloud Panel is thirty nine or something. So it's forty. Uh, so it's the range is not that high, uh, but the implications are huge. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And exactly what you said there. One thing, it's that's I suppose naturally what happens in a hot industry is that providers en enter quickly and providers leave quickly. And that's, I suppose we'll, we'll only we'll, and we'll probably only see in another year's time who will be around and or who will who will have stopped who will have stopped adding features, who will have stopped innovating, and what ones have moved on. I suppose steadily moved on a step. So it is interesting that you say that. Just going back to one thing is that um, you mentioned that. You mentioned about, I suppose, like the the say the Matterport, and like one, one thing I suppose that concerns me is and excites me is that um, is that the industry is moving so quick that like it's the features are coming so quick and fast is that like what happens if Matterport goes bust in the morning like they have a lawsuit against them all the innovation it, all the innovation is on top of that um, and like all like, like the, the, the fastest growing innovation is on top of the platform at the moment like and the stuff is that is really allowing uh, businesses to really I suppose be more specific more niche and kind of really really scale at a I suppose unprecedented rate at the moment is being built on those because you can really go more technical into I suppose use cases and stuff that can be used on a day-to-day -day basis but like what what happens if Matterport those go out of business in the morning. What happens then to all that data? What happens to all the clients? Um, it is it's gone. And I think I, I don't know. Maybe this maybe this also got cut in our last discussion. But I was talking about how how Matterport has this massive class action lawsuit lawsuit against them. Uh, they have lost their founders. They're run by a CEO placed in by the venture capital uh, capitalist. Um, they have raised about a hundred million dollars. They are as old mm -hmm. as us, which is about eleven to twelve years old. Um, which is really bad from a VC return part. So now the VCs are looking for a return. And uh, this is the reason why they have been going down the path of making their product cheaper and cheaper so that they can sell it to more people. Um, yeah. But that does not mean that they are a profitable company. Um, as far as I know, they are not. Um, 
but maybe the pandemic has changed it. Um, and so this becomes a huge problem. Now you have an unprofitable technology old company because they haven't innovated. They've been selling the same technology for 10 years that has a massive yeah. lawsuit. Who buys that company, right? And why do they buy that company? And for what price do they buy the company? Um, and if the, if the company gets sold for pennies, which probably it will because it has a class action lawsuit against it, um, then, uh, you know, where does the technology go? Where does, you know, all the content go? Does the company that buys it uh, own, own all the content? Yeah. They, they, they can take ownership they over all the content. content. Because Matterport owns yeah. all the content you put on your yeah. platform. Um, so it's, it's a, you know, I, I think you can, you, can, you can swear on your live video, but it's a clusterfuck. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Uh, you know, I feel as good as the product is, you know, the company is yeah. a complete clusterfuck at this point. Um, and uh, they catered to a lot of wrong people. They made a lot of lofty promises. You know, people put in, and you yourself, you put in a lot of money to buy that device. And now you're saying, yeah. you yeah. don't need that device. You, you know, you need this yeah. other thing. And so the people that have put in that money are basically, you know, uh, suing the company that we were given false promises. And that's a legitimate case in in the U.S. Like, you know, you can't you can't promise uh, people wrong things and not not deliver on that promise. Um, so anyway, the, the point being that that's just like a that's like a looming cloud over the entire Matterport ecosystem and yeah. uh, people should find alternate solutions uh, yeah. teleportme.com uh, <laughs> if you want to even though we're not as good as the Matterport I'm not going to say we're as good as Matterport um, and uh, learn those systems try to try to convert their customers to those systems talk yeah. to the customers as to why these systems are better tell them about the problems with the with the company and you know maybe Matterport turns around. I really don't know. I'm just telling you what the situation is today. Yeah. What is the situation of the economics of, mm. of a venture back company? Yeah. Um, you know, for example, we were venture backed, but we bought our investors out because we knew that our investors are not going to support us. Um, so we bought them out. We are independent now. Uh, we're profitable. So, uh, the, you know, investors want returns, and uh, yeah. if Matterport is a non profitable company that has a lawsuit over it. I really don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's a, one thing I always found amazing was that they didn't start to innovate with the with their own API. Like, why didn't they? Why didn't they build the solutions that so many other providers went out there and built? And most people are like, most of the successful, I suppose, Matterport people out there now are using it with some sort of, I suppose, a third party add on to really bring the capabilities of the. I suppose of a good, I suppose solid product in, in essence to the next level, and I always found it amazing why they didn't, why didn't they didn't go to that level themselves? Yeah, I think they they can't. That's my point. Is the the the, the core of that team right was a, an ex Google team that worked on the map solution, yeah. and they all got fired. So their core tech team, the core tech CTO founder, is not there anymore. So I think that prob that you know once you don't have that then you're, you're kind of uh, lost in terms of what you do. So, so all they were doing was selling, 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 selling the solution, selling the solution. You know, and now they reached a stage where they can't sell it anymore. The technology has progressed, uh, um, yeah. and they have to find a way out. Yeah, funny. So well, I suppose no no one knows the fate of no Manipur in, I mean, you know, in 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 five years. But where where will teleport me be in five years? <sighs> Man, with the COVID thing, you can't say where any business is going to be in five years. But I That's think uh, I think that, you know, we are, because we're independent and profitable and we've been doing this for a while, we know where we're going to be for the next two years, three years. I think our product is going to get better. Uh, we launched the virtual yeah. product uh, technically uh, three, four months ago. And we have, okay. yeah, we have close to about a thousand customers in that time. So that's, that's a lot of really? customers in four months. It's a small industry. Uh, you know, all yeah. the top panographers recommend our product. Mike from 360 Rumors um, recommends our product. Uh, yeah, Hugh, I don't know if you, have, I don't know if you have Hugh Ho, who is the. Um, I watch his videos. Yeah, yeah, he's very entertaining. Our product. <laughs> yeah, I like him. Um, so all the top guys use our product, right? And the reason why yeah. they use it because it's great. Now the question is, how do we get it to what you would call as the service providers, the guys who are you know trying to make 
uh, that that kind of the, the companies like Cloud Panel and the others cater to, which is I want to provide a service, I want to add it as a part of our product and make it usable in that sense and kind of make it more feature rich. So the, the, yeah. the things that we have planned for next year are more integrations. So things like integrating with your G Drive, integrating with WooCommerce, integrating with WordPress. And again, these things cannot be done by other products because they don't have APIs. So it's kind yeah. of how Creator Up, someone said, that, yeah, Creator Up, that's the guy. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, so, uh, that's 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 going to be our focus. So right now, our focus for this year is to get to. Uh, I, I'm hoping we get to 2,000 customers by the end of this year. Uh, I think uh, we will. Um, and once we get there, we have our core features that we're going to get ready. Uh, we're going to get them really nice and tight, uh, so that we can compete on a feature level um, yeah. with, with all of the other providers. And then the next is integrations, and then that's where you'll see some of the marketing capabilities of our product come up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's that, that's brilliant to hear. It, uh, it's, it's the, the one, I suppose, the one great thing about the, the one thing I suppose that you really kind of have to move towards the future riches because it's you're dealing with people that come from say sales and marketing backgrounds, getting into this industry. They see if not capabilities, you you already have kind of the photography side of things covered. They look for the quality side of things, and then I suppose the other features that are coming down the line will will probably uh, cater for people coming from a more technical background or more specialized background where they see the certain use case for a certain industry. And yeah, really, re really every kind of virtual tour platform has to compete on the feature thing at this stage to draw on new customers but the ones that will stand the longest will be the ones that have the kind of solid foundation and the background behind it then yeah i mean for us our biggest foundation is our applications right so our two apps on the app store have millions of users every month so that you know that itself kind of helps us like we have this massive user base that we have that don't even know we have a virtual tour virtual product yeah. We have not sent them a single email about our virtual tour product. We haven't done anything. They use our product purely just to take panoramas, and they probably use some other service uh, to uh, to put the, the the tours on. But uh, that's the reason why we have a hundred thousand businesses that use our product, but uh, yeah. they don't know because we haven't promoted our product to them yet. So I think there's a lot to do. Uh, we are still early stages for Teleport Me. But you know the way COVID is going, man. You know it's, things can can go any way up, down. Yeah. You know you just don't know how the world is going to end. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that I, I know that where, where we're going to be for two years. That that we have a roadmap for two years. Uh, we're not going to die for that time at least. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in. What industries would you see? Would you see like um? Where do you think the I suppose this industry? Where, where do you think the virtual tour industry is moving in terms of what industries will have the biggest implications for this technology in the future? I think I think uh, if, if, are you talking in the sense of technology? Or are you talking in the sense of what service providers should be thinking of? Or are you thinking? Well, yeah. I suppose what what, what advice would you give to, to new service providers entering this industry and where they should be? Where where their time is best focused? Right. So I think, you know, if you're looking at the industry in the next five to 10 years, so, so like say you're coming into the industry and you're like, all right, I'm a new person. I want to learn the tools so that I can provide this to, uh, you know, my customers for the next five to 10 years. I would really focus on quality of capture, understanding what 3D means. And it's not that difficult. And I really don't think that you need to spend that much time technically even to understand, but have that mindset that this is going to progress in that direction. That's a very 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 important thing because tomorrow the way technology goes and you know this matterport was this was the thing to do right yeah then yeah. you know you 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 snap your finger and it's gone you know instagram was the thing TikTok came and just blasted out of the space right the way technology works is when it comes in it just comes in so quickly that mm -hmm. it takes a while for people to really adjust so i think for yeah. service providers an important and very important part is to look at industries that are based on space um, like real estate is one but real estate churn is too high so it's not really a great place to to put your mark in but things like restaurants um hotels uh, hotels rarely change yeah. uh, universities rarely change and building services on top of it like is marketing services sales services on top of the content you create uh, is more important than just creating the virtual tour so yep. if you're a service provider, you need to figure out, okay, I created the virtual tour for you. I'm going to charge you this much, but then I'm also going to create these marketing tools for you. Yeah. I integrate your 
CRM with, with a virtual tour. I can integrate this with your virtual tour. I mm -hmm. can, you know, and those things are not available right now. Uh, hopefully, Teleport we will be able to provide these integrations very soon. And I think that's where people are, have to go. They have to think of anything that is spatial is a way to, to get leads, right? Yeah. When, you, when you book a hotel, what's the only thing you see? You only see how the rooms look like, how the hotel, you know, how the pool looks like. Yeah. That is the only decision you make. You know, maybe you read the reviews, maybe you read, you see the number of stars, but in the end, that's all you look at. Yeah. Uh, when you're when you're buying a house, you want to see how the so as an asset, as a marketing and sales asset, the spatial contribution is really really high. Um, so service providers need to understand that a photograph is more than a photograph, uh, yeah. and the more you focus on that and focus ways to extract information out of that photograph to to kind of boost marketing, the more your conversions conversions are going to look like. There's a reason why why Facebook and Google and uh, you know uh, Netflix like, look, look at Net Netflix's entire interface is just massive images or moving mm -hmm. videos is because they are absolutely great at engaging people. So when yep. you're doing a virtual tour, unfortunately, the tools right now don't let you engage the pro engage your customer that quickly because they're all old tools. But hopefully, the tools of the future will help you use those images, those 360 photos, those 360 videos in a modular way so that you can provide this as a lead capture as a way to you know say hey you come here let me take you in let me walk you through the space uh, that thing does not exist today uh, yeah. and i think that's kind of where uh, service providers need to think is that if i'm creating a website i think about okay what's the landing page right what's the button size but they don't think that about the spatial stuff and i think once they start thinking about it that way um, they'll see that they will they will be making a lot more money. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That was actually um, the, that, that that's a very good point. Some of the most kind of visually uh, visually say attractive or visually, visually engaging ones I've seen has there has been some. Truly, uh, Vista is quite it's not easy to use, but there has been yeah. some really really good ones that I've seen being built on that. As opposed to Matterport, people know what Matterport is. It's not that. It's not built to be that kind of a tool. But with the likes of that, it was very much so. With Truly Vista, I saw some ones where I was like. Or I was like, okay, what am I doing here? And I'm like looking around, and I wanted to find. I want, detail, yeah, yeah. I want, or I wanted to engage with it, but I didn't know where to engage. Also, um, but it's a great point that you made. Is that is that like, yeah, like it really needs to be a solution around it. So, like, what what I usually end up, I suppose, saying to people most times I'm talking to them is that it really needs to fall into like either three categories depending on the industries. You have to provide, say, a sales and marketing service using virtual tours. You have to provide yeah. either like say a process enabling service for the likes of say, uh, for the likes of say industrial manufacturing manufacturing or it has to be a time and time and cost saving solution for the likes of say architecture engineering and construction so really it falls into three of those categories um and really the, the possibilities are endless it's funny when um when i when i, when I kind of started this new business and there were all these i suppose features and third party add-ons weren't available and i was trying to teach people and show people how to fit their services into each one of these categories without using these features it's made my job so much easier in the last couple of months with these features coming along because I, i'm able to actually uh, tie it back into it and see how you can actually i suppose put down those i suppose go down those routes yeah and um, you, you were saying that you were saying i noticed you i've actually tuned into a couple of the discussions you've had with uh Joachim yourself and um, construction is one industry that i suppose it, it, it's massive capabilities in it it just it, it just there, there's so yeah. much and and the great thing for providers in this industry oh, it's not, it's not an easy industry to enter it's not an easy industry to enter and um, i know that from experience that not anyone can just can knock on a, a door and then get in there in the morning it's a long learning curve a long sales process and um, but it is a very profitable one if you do it yeah if you can get one customer one construction customer that's a lot of money yeah, absolutely, and it's something. If you get if you, if you get one construction company and you show them that look, it's gonna it's gonna save them time here. They don't have to document as much because of this. It's not gonna be something that they'll use for one project. It's something that they'll have to use for every single project and at multiple stages along along a project as well. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And I think uh, the thing that the reason why we haven't gone full into construction is because there are like three other companies that are focused completely on construction mm. uh, using 360 virtual tours. But I, I feel like their approach is a little bit different, which is they are they are trying too hard to be a analysis tool, and I don't think that's where the the value for for three sixty tours is. Uh, I think that uh, from my 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 speaking with most construction companies is that you know analysis is is basically sounds tech cool, but it's not really what solves the problem. So I think uh, 
you know, Cupix is one of them. I think there's another company called Struction Site, and there's another yeah. uh, the name of the, the third company. But these three companies are really focusing on using 360 photography into into construction. Yeah. But I think the solution that they're providing is more of a uh, you know like a vitamin than a painkiller. Yeah, uh, and I think the the painkiller is a service provider plus a software. Um, construction companies don't have the time nor the inclination to go around taking 360 photos. And this is where I think the service providers come into handy where if they come in with a, with a pre-built solution uh, and say, we can provide this for you for, I don't know, $200 a month or 300, I don't know, I'm just coming up with some, some price. Uh, that is an easy sell for a construction company. Yeah. Uh, so we, it, it's more than a 360 tour, but it's a it's a 360 tour plus a service. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, construction sites go for three, four years. So yeah. if you can make one project, you have recurring revenue uh, for at least three or four years. So it, yeah. it's a great space to be in. It was an industry, we, an industry we tried to crack for quite a while. We did have some luck in it, but I suppose, again, it was... The technology wasn't where where it was supposed to be, and there was always too many unanswered questions. A lot of that probably came down to, I suppose, my own experience as well, not having any of a construction background, learning as I went and trying to, I suppose, see how it could feed into their existing processes. But there was there was a couple of main areas that we always focused on. It was and it was mostly kind of around, say, the project documentation side of things and the communication side of things. Being able to being able to see, I suppose, how much how much they used to document the site, say, before, during, and after a project, where that where that I suppose content was stored how it was shared around and how it was how it was used throughout the project that was kind of the main area that we focused on because yeah. like we, really when i bought manaport i was sold on the dream that right it's it's within one percent i can go out and i can sell i can sell a, a 3d a 3d uh as as build or a 3d i bim to a construction company for three thousand every site and realistically what happened to me was i sold three of them in the one week and all three of them were out by one percent but one percent over a tiny room that i'm in here as opposed to a large construction site um yeah i got, I got quite an earful and uh, lost quite a few customers early on because I, I was I was selling something that Matterport sold me basically, so it was funny. It was not all as it seems. That's why we always focused on the, the just purely the project documentation side of things, uh, time and cost saving solution, and, and the communication side of things. Yeah. And and they really did see the benefits of that. But again, there was too many un unanswered questions, and it is quite an area that's very popular, but it's it's hard to enter. It is very hard to enter with with no background or experience because you need to know, I suppose, their, their processes, the way they do things, and um, the I suppose the their, their timelines. And that's actually... why, and you know, I think I think you you on a really important part is that the construction industry unlike the other industries has a process they have a process they have safety standards they have standards that they have to follow and now if you have so when they when they document things it's not simple documentation these documentations are in-depth documentations yeah they have to provide to auditors who come obviously it depends on which country you are in some countries don't really care but most countries uh do care about these things you know you need to get certified and if uh, you know if a architectural firm, for example, wants to use uh, your your documentation, and if your documentation is not well documented, then they're not going to use it, and they're going to basically not you know like I, I I don't know what the word is, but I, I think it's certification, but I think it's something else. Has to match specific guidelines, I think. Yeah, is it accreditation or something like that? I think yeah, you get accredited for something. Uh, so. Uh, uh, and for example, these 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 providers like like Cupix and Structure Insight, they again provide uh, what you would call as pre-built solutions. So if a construction company goes to a service provider and say, "Hey, I need this done. Can you do it for me? I have this I have this product that I use. Can you integrate it for me?" They can't, right? Yeah. So if I have a certain process, and if I'm a construction company, I have a certain process, and I can integrate your solution into mine. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't have an API, it's not extensible, it doesn't yeah. pull in information from, then the construction company is going to say no. So that's where you need the service provider. The idea of the service provider is say, hey, we have this search solution and we know how to integrate it with all your solutions that you have. Yeah. And if that can be done, I think that is a huge value for construction companies. Yeah. Because we are not going to spend money trying to integrate a third party application into all the stuff that they've already spent, you know, millions of dollars of, of uh, software on. Yeah. So that's where this, the service provider comes with. The service provider understands that 
this virtual tour needs to integrate with their solution, whatever process they have, it needs to integrate with that. It's not like real estate or it's not like hotels where you just put it on a website, but it has to integrate with their auditing solution. It has to integrate with their process solution. It has to integrate with their own marketing solutions. So it's, yeah. it's a different uh, use case, um, but there's a lot of money in it. Absolutely. I think, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, think, I think probably in another two or three years, the construction industry probably where the real estate industry is at the moment, where it'll be very much, I think, a staple of of their workflow within every project because it is very much moving that way. It does have mass, massive, I suppose, benefits. And um, but it, yeah, as you said, it's very uh, very fragmented at the moment. And um, a, a lot of people trying to be that one, like Cupix, as you mentioned, Cupix started out as as just a virtual tour company for real estate, and they they spotted the I suppose they spotted the opportunity there. They have come out with some cool features. That do work, but again, it's 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 not it's it's just it's 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 not easy for anybody, even a construction company that knows it. It's not easy for them to implement. It's not easy for a service provider like myself to jump on board and try and sell to a company. It's just there's too many missing missing and moving parts with it. Yes. Okay, so um, let me see what time are we? Some questions now. Let me see. Yeah, let's answer some questions. So, so can, can Matterport be used with Teleport Me? Um, no, you don't. You don't have to answer that one. No, no. so. You can download the panoramas from Matterport and upload it. And then, yeah, actually, there, there is actually also, so Matterport, Matterport lower the quality of the panoramas that you can export. Oh, um, really? Yeah, they do that, but there is some. There is a third-party provider out there that can export the uh, original, orig original high-quality panoramas that Matterport actually captures. So um, I'm not too sure who that is. Maybe yeah. someone else in this group can answer that after. Okay. So um, what is an API? I'll let you answer that one. Well, API, I think someone has answered there is application programming interface, but that's a very uh, that's a very technical term. I think an API is a way to uh, communicate with the software. So if you have software, the softwares want to communicate with each other, yeah. you have something called an API. So most virtual tool providers don't have an API, which is I, I as a virtual tool product cannot communicate with other products. So yeah. um, what we have is our entire virtual tour system, each part of it, which is the hotspots, the colors of the hotspots, the location of the hotspots, the panoramas, every pixel is connected to a messaging system or you call an API. And so another third party can interface with it continuously. So, so yeah, let's see, that's what an API is. Yeah, and, and, and it's funny that you, um, sorry, one second. It's 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 funny that check say that like I don't I don't use any any uh, software program at the moment that doesn't have an API built in. Everything I yeah. use is connect, everything that I use is connected at the moment. So um, in essence, uh, like a virtual a virtual tour, yeah, a virtual tour platform should be no different. Like it is going that way. If if I wanted to, if if like, I suppose I'm not I'm not in that that that's not the business anymore. But like that makes the most sense to me because everything I have at the moment, in order to be able to automate stuff, in order to be able to I suppose streamline some areas, in order to be able to just a lot of it's just naturally in. in in today's world, you need to be able to automate so many areas of your business, and without an API, you can't do that basically. Yeah, I agree. Well, there's this, this, this who is this? Can you share any of your machine learning big data plans? Oh my god, this is like another two hour. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do another, maybe we'll do another talk on that one. <laughs> this is a two hour talk, uh, but I think, I think just essentially, I think our whole, uh, you know, just to briefly put it. Uh, one of the goals of Teleport Me is, you know, the reason why we, we became independent was we realized that just the way people have their data, like you have your personal data, you have also your spatial data, which is the data of your house, your, your, you know, your apartment, whatever it is, and people need to have control over that data. And I think that more and more, a lot of your data is going into the hands of Facebook and Google, and so they have control over it. Mm -hmm. Again, this is like another whole thing. And so we wanted to build a, a, a safe uh, safe place for spatial data that is controlled uh, by, uh, you know, by the person that, that owns that space. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's, that's a good, good, quick answer. That's, I think that's all of them for. So, um, yeah, look, we'll end it there. Um, uh, thanks very much, Vineet. I really enjoyed that. Uh, we went deep into it again, but uh, we'll go deeper into it on the next talk. We'll, we'll set up another one. Um, pe pe people enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I like discussing with you. And um, again, people, uh, teleport me, check it out. Um, you heard, you, you have a good background now into Vineet, where the company is, where they're going, and why they, why they will win long term.
Yeah, I think per, uh, teleportme.com is the, is the, is the website. Uh, and, you know, I am very, very active, uh, as you can see, on customer support. I am active on Facebook. Um, you know, if you ever comment uh, on any of, uh, you know, Thomas's, you know, uh, channel and you tag me, uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to respond. There's someone who's behind decentralized stuff. <laughs> yes, more decentralized stuff. That's true. Yeah. And uh, I think... Uh, you know, and teleportme.com, T-E-L-I-P-O-R-T-M-E.com. Perfect, perfect. Thanks. Well, look, we'll sign off there. Thanks for, thanks for joining us, Vinish. Thanks, everyone else, All for right. joining us. And we'll, we'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.